Hello everyone, this is Tripper, and today we're playing Chivalry Medieval Tree Fair. I mean Warfare. Tree Fair. I don't think we can commit warfare against the trees. We're playing Medieval Warfare! And I'm gonna be teaching you awesome people how to use the Norse Sword. Okay. Now, the Norse Sword is a fantabulous weapon, and it's probably, in my opinion, the most objectively powerful weapon in the game right now. Now, that may be a big claim, but you will see it is insanely powerful. It's just the best all-around good weapon for the most part, and even in specific situations, it's fantastic. 38% damage, 87% speed, 33% reach. Compared to other really, really good weapons, um, the man-at-arms can use the holy water. It's got a lot higher damage and a lot higher reach, as I showed you guys in the last video. Um, it doesn't deal as much damage to Nice and Vanguards, but the extra damage and reach helps out a ton most of the time. And it's got a much better speed than the broadsword. So let's get in there. And what I'm gonna what I'm doing today is I'm trying something a little bit different. Um, it's kind of like the, the format I showed you guys a couple videos ago. I wanted to sort of continue that because you guys like that. You guys like that, and I like the organization of it. It was a lot easier. Um, my friend Fat Slug will be helping me out today. And so I guess I'll just begin with an overview of the Norse Sword. So an overview of the Norse Sword. Uh, it's so fast. It is has the same speed as the Holy Water Sprinkler. And its damage and reach are better. And its damage and reach are better. So I'm going to try to show that to you guys, how the range is a bit higher uh, than the, the, the Holy Water. Now, I do not, I do not by any means prefer this weapon to the Holy Water against Knights and Vanguards. The Holy Water Sprinkler is specifically built for Man-at-Arms to destroy Knights and Vanguards. This weapon is good against every, is, is really well balanced against every class. So if you want something to th uh, use in Team Objective and you don't feel like using a broadsword, this is fantastic. And even if you want to go for something a bit more on the rangy, damagey side, then I would absolutely go with this weapon. As you saw, the strike I hit him with just a moment ago hit him and just with the tip of the blade. Oh, God. Fat Slug is a self-proclaimed blender, so he uses the claymore quite, quite religiously, and it's quite glorious. Uh, so, the range of this weapon, now, it may only say 33, right? That's a bit lower than the broadsword, but it, compared to the holy water, considering it has the same speed, is it's awesome. Right? That's like, that's another 9%. No way! I... So, let me try that again. I'm going to try to poke him with just the tip. Just the tip, honey. Okay, that's not just the tip. Mm. And it also has the same speed as the Holy Water. So, it is extremely powerful, balance-wise. So, let me try. Just get this poke on here. Ah, there you go. You see, I poked him with just the tip. It is a very good weapon to augment your bubble, which is the distance. And it's just a great all-around weapon, I guess, overall, overview-wise. So some specific tactics you can use with it. If you find yourself fighting enemies with very fast weapons, like a Vanguard, Claymore, and you don't think you can keep up with that kind of range with a Holy Water, use this weapon, because it does work, okay? Um, it really does work against weapons that are normally a bit too long to engage, so it's fantastic for that. Uh, it counters 
worked very well against Vanguard's knight long weapons, and it deals a very solid amount of damage. Uh, it's not the Holy Water Sprinkler. It doesn't deal a very minute amount of damage. And you can just please use that range by all means. You do not have to play defensively with this weapon because its range and damage and speed are so well balanced. You can be really offensive with it if you want to. And a lot of competitive uh, chivalry men-at-arms, this is their main weapon. Almost always, almost all men-at-arms use this as their main weapon. Uh, broadsword is kind of a transition metal. Uh, transition metal. Transition sort of thing. Because the broadsword has a bit less speed. A very noticeable less speed. You see, he's got that range, but I also have comparable range. So it's a very, very interesting contrast. Um, so, the stat that you want to focus on when using this weapon is speed and reach, right? So you know how I normally say, don't rely on the speed or don't rely on the reach. You can, by all means, rely on the speed and also the reach for a little bit, right? You don't have to face hug to make this weapon work. The holy water, you have to do a little bit of face hugging. But this thing, just the tip, right? Just the tip. <laughs> Mm. Ow. Oh, my. Okay. And it is so fast. It is lightning speed. Right? The main stat you should be using with this, you should be relying on, is the speed. But you can rely on your range a little bit. Now, again, most men-at-arms weapons, you can't rely too much on the damage. So, uh, don't try relying on that too much. Right? You want to rely mostly on your speed and reach with this weapon. Now, I'm going to show you guys a match with the shield. As always, do not abuse the shield, but if you enjoy that short attack period, and I'll be doing a shield tactics this week, I promise. It'll probably be my next video even. Oh, Jeebus. I don't enjoy the shield very much, mostly because it obscures my field of vision a little bit. And some people might be like, well, that's just something you gotta practice out of. Well, it's a little bit annoying to me, so I just, I don't use it normally. But if you think you like that extra... Because if you might notice, when I poke now, it's a bit faster after I release, but it's slower on the wind-up. Ow. It's fine. Um, the shield, however, can come in handy when you're dealing with those high damage-dealing weapons. Um, and you don't know how to parry very well. And as you can see, the shield might be kind of beneficial um, for the... Oh, shit. Might be kind of beneficial for the the actual attack speed of the weapon. Um, I should probably tell him to go. <laughs> okay, so I think i probably given you enough shield. Only really use the shield if you don't feel comfortable with your parries yet. Because... As you can see, I'm automatically doing better without the shield, just because it kind of annoys me, right? It gets in my peripheral vision. It gets in the way of everything. I just don't... I like being able to see that, that bit of range, right? I like being able to have full situational awareness. Uh, now I'm going to show you this weapon against the man-at-arms. Now this is the best... Right after this match, I guess. This is the best... Pretty much the best counter to man-at-arms that the Man-at-Arms can currently use. Just as I showed you, the Holy Water Sprinkler is probably the best in terms of um, fighting vanguards and knights. The Norse Sword is definitely the best against Man-at-Arms. Uh, which doesn't mean it's bad against vanguards and knights. It just means it, 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 deals, it deals extra damage to Man-at-Arms because it's bladed. Didn't I... Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. So, no, oh, he hasn't gone man-at-arms yet. Fight. MAA next, Porfo 4. Yes. I just wanted to show you at least one round with it. And I'm going to... Whoa! Now, as you can see, the range... You can't exactly compete head-to-head -head with these, with uh, the longsword and some vanguard weapons with range, but you can keep your bubble 
at a very nice, respectable distance. And since your speed is much higher, you own close, count close encounters, close combat engagements. You absolutely own them. Um, okay, so I'm going to get to show you one round against Men at Arms. That's fine. Actually, I'm going to also be showing you some random duels after this, this round. Okay. Yeah, you see he's using the broadsword. And that is the generic, pretty much, weapon of choice for the man-at-arms. Or is he using a Norse sword? Oh, he might be. I don't know exactly. But, regardless, if they're using the broadsword, you can get in a little bit, get within their bubble, because your speed far outweighs theirs. And if you got any kind of tactical prowess for, like, you know, movement as you're striking, this weapon is fantabulous. Okay. So, you saw against a man-at-arms, you can go head-to-head -head with that kind of speed. Um, what more is there? I'm going to do some random duels as well uh, in the next round. But what we covered was a lot of stuff. So, as you saw, the Norse Sword plus Shield, I wouldn't really recommend it unless you're just working on not... Unless you're not that good at parrying. Uh... Are still working on it. I can totally understand, but I would I would seriously recommend it alone. Uh, you can absolutely try to make use of the reach. Get those pokes in, man. It's even more pokey than the holy water sprinkler. I'm gonna have to rename the holy water sprinkler to something other than poke poke boom because this thing is better at poking pretty much. Uh, it is. It has. It has quite a bit more range. It has nine percent more range. So it is a. It is a very versatile weapon, I'll give it that. Now, the broadsword, you might think, well, the broadsword does a lot more damage. A little bit less speed, but also a lot higher range. But as a man-at-arms, your goal should be getting around the enemy. Right, you need to use that speed. You need to have that good speed balance. Duels now, slug. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of random duels, just with some dudes in here, just to see, show you how it goes. Oh, okay, no, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm trying to, trying to teach somebody how to use this, this weapon. I'm so, so sorry. I've broken the honor code, guys, I apologize. Um, but, as you can see, this weapon does very well against people using fists. <laughs> okay, what the hell. Whatever. I know I was going to teach you guys how to use the Norse sword, but... I'm gonna have to break this guy's head today. Okay. Give me your head. It's mine. Oh! Okay. Well, I apologize for, for dis distrusting him. Uh, what more can I say? So, yeah, comparing the two, the broadsword's probably the most used man at arms weapon, but compared to the Norse sword, that slight difference in speed, that little 5%, it means a lot. Don't underestimate it, right? It's just fast enough. I'm so sorry. I know I'm a traitor. I'm so, so sorry. I just want to get at least one random duel in with somebody skillful. Um, unseen cookie. We'll go with that. So, in practical combat, the type of maneuvers you're going to be wanting to do, you want to accelerate all the strikes you can, because this is, again, tied for the fastest weapon as man-at-arms. I don't even know what I did there. I did that, and then... Uh, but, but do everything you can to maximize the usage of the speed, because that will win you the duels. All right, I think I'm going to finish this duel with this guy. As much as I'd hate to kill him. Shut up, computer. Okay, and we're finishing with a head. As glorious as it is. <laughs> One last look at the stats. Uh, as you can see, it is tied with the holy water for that. I actually... Shoot! I didn't even get to show you this. Let's show you one duel with the knight thingy. The knight north sword. Uh, I would actually recommend the Knight Norse Sword as a secondary, because it's so damn fast. So damn fast. No, we're not using that. Don't use the double axe ever, please. All right, Archer. Great, I get to practice my Archer arrow dodging tactics. Fuck that! He hit my head. 
Oh, well that's a dandy. Oh fuck. He's gonna get one stab on me. And I'm going to die, but... Hmm. Just regaining health. Oh wow, okay Spade. I've got a solution. It's called a tower shield. <laughs> this is the one use of shields that I'm gonna tell you guys in my shield tactics video. Uh, dealing with very skilled archers. Spade looks like a very skilled archer, but the tower shield is a glorious thing. Because it doesn't even do it! As a oh, he hit me in the toes, though. I'm so sorry. You see, even against the dagger, it can work out, right? Uh, and as a knight, this kind of speed is really rare in a weapon. So, when you can get it, you want it. Yeah, I know I fainted my last life. Spade. Uh-oh. Oh! You see that? Okay. Thank you, sir. You see, you can get in and out really fast with this weapon. Okay. I think that's about it. It's all the time we have for today. I, I hope I taught you guys something educational in this video. I know it was a bit longer than my normal ones, but I wanted to get in those random duels in addition to the organized class-specific tactics. Uh, in overview, let's, let's just go over some key points. Against Knights and Vanguards, it is a great alternative to the Holy Water. It's not as specifically built to destroy them, but it can really get in their faces with its range. Man-at-Arms, it is just definitively the Man-at-Arms killer. Um, it's the perfect counter if you're a Knight or another Man-at-Arms to kill them, and it's a great all-around weapon. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using shields with it. Use its speed and its range to your advantage as much as you can. Um, I believe that is about it. Overall, a fantastic weapon. Hope I taught you guys something. Like, favorite, subscribe if I did. Share it if you loved it. Please comment any questions you have pertaining to this weapon or anything at all. And any suggestions you have for future tactics videos. I'm totally open to them. And I believe that is all. I will see you guys next time. As always, have a dandy day. See you guys.